Hello, students. In this video, we'll see how to approach solving the Laplace equation by using the same method as we did to solve the wave equation. So if we recall, if we had f t t was equal to c squared f x x, then the general solution to this would be f of x t is going to be some function a of what? a of x plus c t plus a function b of x minus c t. That was the general solution to the one-dimensional wave equation. We can actually plug this back in to check. Now what we want to do is we want to solve the Laplace equation. So the Laplace equation I'm going to use x's and y's now as is more typical, says that f x x plus f y y is equal to 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as f y y, f y y is equal to negative f x x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative, negative 1 and I'm going to write it as i squared. So this is f y y is equal to i squared f x, x. And so what we see from this is we can say, at least formally, if I, I have c is being played by i. So let's test this out and see if it works. At least formally, we can do this. So formally, formally I claim that if I look at f of x and y, which is some function a of, I'm going to have a what? Now, playing the role of t is going to be y, and playing the role of c is going to be i. So x is x, beautiful. c is equal to i, so I'm going to plug in an i here, plus i times y, which is being played by t, and then plus b of x minus i y. So it looks like functions of x plus i y and x minus i y should at least formally solve the Laplace equation. So this formally solves the Laplace equation. f x x plus f y y is equal to 0, or namely Laplacian of f is equal to 0. These functions that satisfy this equation, the Laplace equation, are called harmonic functions. Harmonic functions. Harmonic functions occur almost everywhere in mathematics, from finance to physics to chemistry to biology. Everywhere the Laplace equation comes up, because the Laplace equation can be realized as saying the divergence of the gradient of f is equal to zero. So it's a measure of the divergence, or in other words, the flux of a gradient vector field. Good. All right, so let's test this out and see. So we're going to have to use a little bit of uh, knowledge of complex functions. It turns out that in the set of complex variables, these functions over here are called analytic functions. These are called analytic functions. And these functions over here are called anti-analytic functions. And when you study functions of a complex variable, functions of a complex variable say the functions of the class A, the analytic functions. So let's see an example of this. So example, I'm going to take a very simple function. I'm going to take a of z to be just e to the z. I'd like to see if this solves the Laplace equation. So in other words, what will a of x plus i y be? It'll be e to the x plus i y. And we'll see that this is e to the x times e to the i y. Now we know from Euler's formula that this is going to be cosine of y plus i sine of y. Okay. Let's at least check this first term over here, this x e to the x cosine y. Does that satisfy the Laplace equation? Let's check. So look at e to the x cosine y. If I do two x derivatives of this, it's easy to see that two x derivatives of this are just going to be the exact same thing, cosine of y. If I, do two, if I do two y derivatives, what will happen to this cosine over here? If I do two y derivatives, the cosine will first turn into negative sine. And then the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. So this will be negative e to the x cosine y. And lo and behold, when I add the second x derivative to the second y derivative, I get 0. So in fact, e to the x cosine y is a harmonic function. Neat. OK, so at least formally our intuition is working so far. Let's pick another function, a of z. Let's look at a of z, which is what? Which is z cubed. So if I look at x plus i y cubed, what will I get? Well, I'm going to get x cubed and then plus 3i x squared y. And then if you check this, that's an i. If I do the y squared, that's negative 1. So then I'm going to have a what? A negative 3xy squared. And then a minus 
i, y cubed. And so I'll just look at the terms that do not have an i. You can check the terms that do have an i also will be harmonic functions. So if I look at this function over here, g of x, y, which is what? Which is x cubed minus 3 x, y squared. If I do two x derivatives of this, let's see what will happen if I do two x derivatives of this. Two x derivatives will be giving me what? The first term will be a 3x squared, and then I'm going to be a 6x. So I'm going to have a 6x. And if I do two x derivatives of this term over here, I'm going to get nothing. If I do a two y derivatives of this, what will happen? Partial squared f, partial y squared. If I do one y derivative, I'll get negative 6xy. If I do two y derivatives, I do the, the y derivative of negative 6xy, that'll just be a negative 6x. Oh, so lo and behold, if I add the second x derivative to the second y derivative, I get 0. So this function over here is also a what? That function over here is a harmonic function. So I would encourage you to pick some functions a of z and plug in x plus iy, algebraically manipulate them, use Euler's formula, or use the power of i trick, and see if you can construct many more examples of harmonic functions using the method of characteristics, as this is called. Thank you very much.